Men Monday, another beautiful day in little Saigon here. How you doing, Mindy? Very good, Charles, and I'm very excited today. I'm so honored to invite Deborah here with us, the person that I've been, you know, very, very, like I said, honored to meet at the Orange County Leadership Academy in 2018-19. Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot from Deborah and the whole team at the OCR Leadership Academy. My pleasure. Yeah. Well, let's properly get <laughs> Deb's uh, credentials here. Um, so, introducing Deb Schreider. Um, well, when Deb's daughter was born in St. Jude's Hospital, a realtor, a realtor's granddaughter, and a lender were in the hospital room before her husband. Is that correct? Correct. She considers real estate professionals her family. So that considers us as family, right? Yeah. So Deb has worked for five different associations of, of realtors and has uh, written for presidents of CAR, NAR, as well as agents and associates locally, nationally, and of course globally. Correct. Amazing. Right? We are in that world. So October, um, which was last month, uh, is a special anniversary month for Deb. Last week, uh, apparently, celebrated your 40th anniversary of her arrival in the United States 23 years ago in October when she founded her company, Put It In Writing. Mm -hmm. That's yep. right. Uh, 20 years ago this month, she purchased her first home. Well, congratulations on that. Home. Yeah, still special home. October. <laughs> and she is a self-confessed quirky Brit. That's correct. A crazy cat lady. Really? Well, yeah, yeah, cat ladies are a little crazy. Yeah, we are. Uh, probably have four or five cat videos probably done on well, YouTube, of few, course. Yeah. And she is currently in the process of tearing her hair out, planning her daughter's upcoming Christmas wedding scheduled in 59 days. Actually, Holy wow. smokes. Wow, when I wrote that it was 59, it's now 28. Oh, 28, <laughs> holy. Anyway, so Deb is here to help you say bye-bye. Boring bio. There you go. Ampersand, 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 yeah. or 30. That's like in a press release. It's done and finished, right? Well, pleasure and thank you, thank you for having me you on amazing. your show. All right. Well, that was the introduction of introductions. Amazing, amazing. See, I'm telling you, it was my honor. Yeah. Yeah. And it is a treat to have you. Is that kind of a British term? I think we use the word treat. Interchangeable. And yeah, I, I now question because. I've lived here so long, um, when I first came here, there was a lot of phrases that the British people use that weren't in common usage here or had different meanings. So I always hesitated to say something. Does that mean the same here as I think it does? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I need petrol and I left my wallet in the boot. And, <laughs> That's and, right. Uh, exactly. You know, where the heck is, you know, <laughs> yeah, the bonnet and the uh, carter. So my husband right. had to put something in the dustbin. He said, what do you mean the dustbin? You mean the trash can? I said, yeah, in the dustbin. He said, there must be some heavy duty dust you put in there, you know. <laughs> so it, I've uh, been here long, long enough now that I think I can make myself understood a lot clearer. Right, and if you guys watch Harry Potter, they have not a Merry Christmas, but Merry Christmas, but a Happy, Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Yeah, it's a little different. Right? Yes. Well, here you are. Um, I can imagine real estate to be amazingly different in you know the UK but uh, I could imagine it is a bit you know you call yourselves like like for example a is and correct me if I'm wrong our our attorneys and lawyers uh, called solicitors I solicitors think. yeah, yeah which is no, kind of weird this is what we get in trouble when we're you know, <laughs> door knocking we right? don't have escrow in England oh, so yeah. we have solicitors who handle all the legal aspects of okay the kind of like New York and mm -hmm. stuff because Obviously, I mean, people most people must realize that most of the laws in the United States are borrowed from British know, common law. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So, and that's something you kind of deal with a lot of that in, I guess, uh, OCR uh, Orange County Realtors Association a lot. Um, I'm not involved with the association anymore. I was an independent contractor doing right. their leadership academy, so uh, I'm I'm not so much on the real estate transaction side, but. What I like to do is make real estate agents and lenders and affiliates look good by putting their words into writing for them. Oh, wow. And so, of course, the amazing, well-written bio. And that's, <laughs> so I find that always a stumbling block, you know, when, especially even listings and just talking yeah, about, yeah, yeah. you know, oh, another cozy home, you know, with, uh, I mean, it's mm -hmm. just, 
you know, those words get so exactly. cliche and, and stuff. Even me, I'm struggling with that too, yeah, because, you know, we're born not to be in very good uh, skill in writing or, you know. Work. Well, if yeah. English isn't your native language, there's right. always that lack of confidence. There's always that, mm -hmm. that consideration. Am I I'm grammatically correct? Am I doing this? And there's so many ways around it now with, with software programs. But there is, no matter how many listings you've had, when you get that new listing, once the euphoria is worn off that you've got the new listing, it's like, oh my gosh, I've got to sit down and write about it now. And so um, that's how I started getting involved with, with real estate writing. I actually worked for a lot of Remax companies. I worked for the Remax broker owners in Orange County, Long Beach, San Diego, and the San Fernando Valley. And they're all broker owner teams. And um, I started working with Orange County first with um, Gary Thomas, who was president of NAR not so long ago. And um, he says, you know, we have these great meetings where we meet everyone and all the brokers come together and we could collaborate on advertising because at that time, uh, paper print ad was a big deal. In the Orange County Register, there was a, like a big whole real estate section. And so all the Remax brokers would pull their money and buy big ads in the paper. And so he said, but we have these meetings and then everyone goes back to their office and they're so busy doing what they need to do, right. nothing gets done. So they brought me in to kind of be a person to make things happen. Oh, wow. And I said, well, if you can't keep me busy with your projects, um, I'll write the articles for you for your newspaper about your agents and about your listings. Wow. So that's really how I kind of segued into working with it. And then I, uh, word got out, I suppose, and then I got a call from San Diego. Would I go do the same for them? And the San Fernando Valley and Remax of California, Hawaii brought me in and uh, said, would you come and work with us too? Which was great. You mean you have to go all the way to Hawaii? I did. The they they sent me to Maui. Can you believe that? <laughs> so it was a hard gig, but I, I, I figured I could make it work. Kenny, okay. did you did you incorporate pigeon English into the uh, <laughs> Queen's English? You know? No, we didn't have any problems with that. But that was, you know, um, I got very involved with the real estate community at that right. time, and um, I was working. As I said, I first started working for a real estate trade association, okay. North Orange County Realtors, which was oh gosh, so many years ago now, and there has been so many mergers since. Mm -hmm. And um, how I got into it really was through volunteerism. Um, when I first got in this country, like most people, I didn't know anyone and I needed to make connections sure. and so uh, I found out that there was actually a psychiatric hospital literally at the end of my street and they were looking for volunteers. Mm. So I thought, well, I'll go volunteer there and see what they need help with. Any realtors there? Not that I know of, not no, at that okay. time. <laughs> So um, I was a volunteer then, not a patient, by the way. Okay, So right. um, to clear that up. I went to the psychiatric hospital and I worked with the suicidal teens on their locked unit, mm. uh, which was really interesting. I had to have some training so that I could use terminology that the psychologist could understand if I had an interaction with people. But anyhow, long story short, um, they asked me if I would do a newsletter for them for all their volunteers. And while I was doing the newsletter, we put together a volunteer kind of appreciation event. We went to the local Brea Theatre League company to see a show. And of course, I had the newsletter in mind, so I wanted photographs. And the show was Dracula the Musical. So I said, can I get all the volunteers on stage after the show and get a picture with the cast? And they nice. said, sure. So the next thing I know, they're saying to me, well, why don't you volunteer for us? And that's why I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> so I volunteered, well, so I volunteered for the uh, Theatre League and the person that was on the board at the time was a realtor. Mm. And I was looking for a job and she introduced me to the CEO of the North Orange County Association and the rest, as they say, is history. I've now got five different associations under my belt I've worked for. Awesome. All from volunteering. Yeah, see, that, that's the thing that when I first uh, joined the Leadership Academy, the most impressive thing that you know the the, the, the topic that you uh, bring up is write about your bio. You need to make sure your bio is you know perfect to the the audience, and make sure all the um, uh, you know your social media wherever you at you know make sure your bio is correct. You know, and and I, I like the the fact that you say. Resume, between resume and bio, there's a difference. There is a yeah. difference. Yeah. Um, most people think they're interchangeable, and it's very easy once I, when I say, say it, you'll, oh, your light bulb will go off. A resume is what you do, and a bio is who you are. And because of COVID, it's been even more important now to have a digital presence. And so people go online, when they meet you, yeah. they go and they Google, right? Yeah, they want to read And they you. want to see what comes up. Yeah, all and the dirty laundry. <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, but my, my laundry's pretty clean, thanks, Charles. 
But you know what happens is when when I have written thousands of bios for agents, and I, when I ask them, you know, what is your unique value proposition? Why should I do business with you, mm. Charles, versus you, Mindy, sitting in the next desk? And I hear the same answers over and over. Um, I because I am a people person. I like helping people. I go the extra mile. I give one hundred and ten percent. And everyone says oh, that. Exactly. What? Exactly. I mean, coffee. <laughs> it becomes white noise because yeah, everyone right. says the same. Oh. And so what you need to do is with a with a bio, you have to say you have to give a, a, you know say that you, what you can do and prove it. Give proof that you can do what you say you can do. But you also want to have people lean in a little bit and, and be interested in you. You, you, know, you. you don't want them crossing their eyebrows like, what are they talking about? You want them to lean in with their eyebrows yes. raised. Something very new or interesting. something exciting, right? And I can give you a little story. I did, uh, I did a class for the Leadership Academy, as Mindy knows. Um, mm-hmm. One of the agents asked me to write her bio. And um, I wrote it and she seemed happy with it. And a few months went by and I brought her back to another academy class to speak. And she took me aside. She said, I've got to tell you something, she said. When you wrote my bio, you put in there that I like baking cookies. I said, yes, I did. And she said, and I thought, what has that got to do with real estate? And she said, I thought, well, Deb knows what she's doing. I'll leave it in. She said, I have to tell you, I had a new client. This was pre-COVID. And she said, we were, show, we were driving around showing property. And the wife turned to her and said, I knew I'd like you, Kathy, the moment I read that you like baking cookies. Mm-hmm. And she said, it was like, woo, there it is, you know. And you won't connect with everyone, but you'll get enough. Lots of cookies. <laughs> <laughs> big cookies. But you have to find something of interest that's going to draw people in to want to know more with you and to uh, to know more about what you do. Um, I just gave a bio presentation at a, a property preview meeting in North Orange County, and the the lender that was running the meeting, she had gone back to Pennsylvania to help her son buy a house, and she said, "I didn't know any agents back there." So she, like everyone else does, she Googled it. And she read all their bios and she said, this lady that she ended up hooking up with for to help her son, she said, as I read her bio, I thought, she sounds like a really nice person. I think I could relate to her. I think I'd go do well with her. I feel comfortable with her. And that's what it's all about. Your bio has to make someone feel, oh, I think I'd like that person. I think I could work well with that person. You know, it, it's all very well to have a, a bio that says how great you are, but they wanna, would I really like working with you? Yeah, so instead of saying I've got, you know, a hundred five-star reviews on Yelp, it'd be like, I like long walks on the beach. Well, <laughs> I'm not saying that corny, but they want to hear more of the personal the side personal of side. what you yes. want, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, and, and talking about a hundred five-star reviews, do you know that if you have all five-star reviews, people kind of view that with skepticism? Mm-hmm. It's sometimes good to have something that isn't 100% because they think that you've paid someone to write all those reviews. <laughs> so if you do get a slightly you know, less right. than perfect review, leave it up there. It makes it more authentic. I see. Interesting. Another mm-hmm. way to think, huh? Well, but you know, everything we see, and yeah, now you have videos that are kind of replacing written content, but still, I mean, Everything that's on MLS, on marketing brochures, sometimes they could be factoids and things, but I mean, everything has to be written in, I think, you know, the English language has really been, you know, took a a real hit with social media and all the slang and cut off words and, you know, and instead of connecting proper sentence, we just put dot, 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 you know, Um, I always put the parentheses in the wrong place, you know, when I do the quotes, but anyway. Yeah, I think it's. Um, I think we need someone like you to just like you know whip everyone around and slap exactly. us in the face and go, hey, look, you know, this is improper or it makes you look like you know you missed out on the third grade. So. Yeah, sometimes yeah. they're so busy with just you know focusing in uh, meeting the client or uh, doing deals, but that they forgot about you know um, all this. That's why I I, I love to to have you uh, come on board and help us mm-hmm. and then teaching our client uh, I mean like um, agents over here how to um, mm-hmm. look at this all the class that you put out like uh, say yes to the address very interesting and and bye bye to the boring bio mm-hmm. and then you know are you LinkedIn missing a lot of people don't touch a LinkedIn very very good tool well good tool. and yeah. you know like you said it's you look at all those profiles it's the same old you know um, Stuff and there's some testimonials that are kind of interesting here and there, um, and recommendations. But for the large part, it looks like someone just paid to 
to do it, and it's not very personal. Yeah, it's very difficult, and I think also um, it's very difficult to write about yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, I've written thousands of bios. I hate writing my own bio. I, I really do. And I think um, particularly if um, you're lacking in some confidence, or I think sometimes it's a cultural thing, particularly with um, I see with the Asian community, is that they culturally they're not told to be boastful and bragging, yeah. right? And so when they're writing about themselves, they, they, they find it really difficult. And um, I had a, a Leadership Academy alumni, and she had put a headline on one of her uh, social media profiles, aspiring to be a leader. And I said, wait a minute. I, I called her out, and she got very uncomfortable. We're on a Zoom meeting. And I said, I saw that, aspiring to be a leader. I said, you are already a leader. Mm -hmm. You've been chair of a committee. You've been yeah. involved with global groups. I said, you can say aspiring to be a better leader, but in my mind, you're a leader. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I see this over and over again. I had another Academy alumni who was asked if she would be, because um, the association has what, one or two directors at large each year. And so the president has said, Tina, you know, would you be my director at large next year? And I was interviewing her for a bio, and I said, well, how did you respond to that? And she said, oh, I said, are you sure? And it just blew my mind. And I said, Tina, you've just told me your incredible journey. You came from Vietnam. You supported your family. You, came, you worked for a bank. You were so good at what you do. A headhunter from an advertising agency hired you. You handled multi-million dollar accounts. You came here not knowing anyone, not speaking the language. And now you're a successful real estate agent. And you doubt that you could be on the board of directors. And I said, do you know what a man would have said if I'd asked the same thing? She said, no. I said, well, he probably would have said, they think I'm so great, they want me on the board of directors. So I think that there's a real big imposter syndrome with particularly ladies in particular. Some men have it too. Mm -hmm. But it's very hard to write about yourself. And if, you know, even me growing up, I was growing up, you know, I was born in England, in London. But I remember my dad telling me that little girls should be seen and not heard. Mm -hmm. And so you've got those, those dialogues running in the back of your brain all the time. So when you sit down to write about yourself, it's really, really hard. Um, I find that what I do is I interview someone and I get down and I can kind of drill down to the nuggets and make them comfortable. And I've had people say to me, are you sure this is me you've written about? <laughs> <laughs> or I've had, I'm going to show this to my mom. They're going to be so proud of me, you know. Right, or maybe there's a direction they went and you're kind of uncomfortable with. Right? Do you have to talk about that? <laughs> you know, I don't bake cookies every day. You know? <laughs> So, you know, it's, it's, it's very hard to write about yourself and, and these days you've got to have that digital presence. Uh -huh. People will Google you, they will find you online and, um, you know, I have lots of different ways that you can, like the other thing that, that bugs me is when people have their name and they have all uh, like an alphabet soup of initials after their names, big long lines, uh, C, CRS and, uh, and all these, you've seen them all, GRI, the whole lot of them. And to the consumer, when they see that, it doesn't mean a thing. Mm. I mean, it's alphabet soup. So I told people, I said, it's important that you've got those designations. Um, I did communicate education for seven years from an association, so I know how much work goes into getting it. But I said, you, you've got to tell them what they are and why they're important to them that you have them. You know, you can't just assume, well, CRS, you know. And I said, um, and I have a, a, a little trick I use called, uh, which I've technique, I, it's not a trick, it's a technique. Mm, um, like it's called techniques the, and tricks. It's <laughs> called the so what method. Mm. So when you're trying to get down to the really important stuff, you keep asking the question, so what? Mm. So for example, um, if someone says, I have the CRS designation, you ask yourself, so what? Well, only 2% of Asian agents nationwide have the CRS designation. Mm. So what? Mm. Well, that means I have a bigger access to buyers and sellers all over the nation. Mm -hmm. So what? That means I can sell your house quicker and uh, for more money in a quicker time. There's the nugget. So when you make a statement, just keep saying, so what, so what, so what, and you'll oh. get down to the really good stuff. Oh, okay. You know, because you can't assume that, that the consumer knows what a CRS is. So you have to tell them what it is and why it's important to them. Mm -hmm. If you're like me, you have no designations. <laughs> Come on, Charles. <laughs> but you've got experience. I've got tons of experience. Uh, yeah, well, he got tons yeah, of yeah, you got, know got secret nothing. bullets that you know until you get to know him, you discover. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't even know what those things mean. CRS, GRI. I don't even know what GRI means. GRI is Graduate Realty Institute. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
things. Like, you know, if you go onto LinkedIn and you'll see, or everyone's got all these. Yeah. I only know IRS. And, yeah. <laughs> all right. Now, I mean, you'll stay away from that one, Charles. I know I they are. It. <laughs> but you know, we've become such a a, a a nation of acronyms. You know, we, we and they roll off your tongue so easily. You know, like ARIA and NAREP and. And if you're in that group, you know what it is. But if you're outside of that group, you've got no No, idea. I I caught somebody talking about a CCIM designation to a couple of developer clients. They had no idea what they were talking about. I had to kind of like, uh, that means this. Because, yeah, I'm trying to work on my CCIM, and they have no idea what they're talking about. I do. (laughs) Right, but but the other folks didn't, so it was kind of interesting. So, yeah, sometimes you do get caught up in assuming everyone knows all of the, uh, you know, yeah. acronyms. And I guess if your acronym is very well known, then congratulations. You know, and, and it's, again, it's something that is, it, we are educating and informing the consumer yeah. as to why they would, why they should like you, why they should, re- and it, it also gives gravitas because it shows you that you're really committed to your, your profession, you're taking these designations, but unless you tell them why that's important to, see, the, the, the conundrum is a bio is about you. But the person reading it really wants to know, what are you going to do for me? So you, you've got to really put that mixture of information about you, plus you, know, you have to reel them in as to what you can do for them. You mean I have to get them to like me and i got to tell them what I'm going to do for them? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm so excited, Deborah. Very, very excited. <laughs> yeah. Charles, we'll just you know. have Deborah write that stuff. <laughs> No, that, because so you know, cool. you know, look so at the important. look at the schedule. This is the list she can do to you know oh, our wow. agent in the office. We're gonna put the class together the right for our stuff, agents man. to learn, you know, how to present themselves properly to the world, right? Absolutely. You know, make them feel more confident when they're out there. Yeah, I'm so excited about that. So let's talk about you. Uh, enough about this. <laughs> <laughs> I will want to learn about you. So you know, you always look very charming and. I love the pink color Thank today. You. Thank How you. do you, um, you know, keep in wow, shape? I didn't even realize yeah. that was pink. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't exactly keep in shape. I just got off uh, a call with my doctor for uh, an annual checkup, and she says, what she always says the same thing. Like lose it. weight. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Lose weight, eat healthier, and drink more water. So, you know. Mm. But, um, no, I've, I've, I've been here 40 years, and um, the reason I came to the U.S. was I always wanted to work abroad, and I had zero talent at foreign languages. I mean, I took French and German in school. Mm. And I can remember my report card from my French teacher. He says, Deborah tries hard, but is making no progress in this subject. Oh. You know? <laughs> so I mistakenly thought that the Americans spoke the same as the English people until I came here. But they don't call it American language, they call it English. They call it English. Oh, yes. But when I go into the supermarket when I first got here, uh, everything had a different name. Monge too. Over here is snow peas. Oh. What you call eggplant, I knew as aubergine. Mm-hmm. And then I arrived in October, and because Christmas was coming up, and in England, um, Christmas crackers are a staple of the Christmas table. And so I'm asking all the supermarkets, which is where I'd normally go when I was living in England, do you have any Christmas crackers? And they're showing me graham crackers. I'm like, no, 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 no. I said, no, no, I think they're on the lorry still. I mean, no, I said, that they're, they're, they're long and they're wrapped in foil and you pull them and they explode and they're looking at me like, what planet are you from? Of course, now you can find Christmas crackers in a lot of places over mm-hmm. here. You know, you can buy them online. But um, so there was a real kind of, when I came over, I thought, gosh, they don't exactly speak the same language as me. Plus, my accent was a lot uh, stronger. And also... Um, being a Londoner, I tend to speak very quickly. Um, I've had to learn to slow my speech down. Um, for example, um, you might hear it back if I was back home, my mum would turn me and say, put the kettle on. Put the kettle on. <laughs> oh, put the kettle on. And then, and then it gets even more confusing because my mum was almost what they call a cockney, which um, mm. most people don't exactly know what a cockney is. More Scottish kind of... No, no? A, co- a cockney mm. is someone that's considered a true Londoner and they have to be born within the sound of the Church of Bow's bells, within the sound of bow bells. Oh, wow. And they have their own slang, so they might call um, your barnet fair is your hair, your errol flynn is your chin, oh, your plates of meat are your feet, your god forbids are your kids, mm. the trouble and strife, that's your wife. <laughs> so, so you see, there was all this kind of slang that was so different. I thought Cockney was actually just a kind of a more of a uh, 
uh, more of an accent that's more attributed to a different part of England. So, wow, I learned something. If you watch My Fair Lady, you'll see a lot of Cockney coming up in that one. Okay. So when I came here, I had to, um, you know, I, 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 they kind of spoke the same language, but I had to learn a few things, you know, I had to say things differently. But, um, and I really uh, wanted to stay here, so I ended up getting married and went back to England and came back and got married and was married for 18 years mm. and had my beautiful daughter who's getting married next month. So That's right. And how many days? 28 days. That's who's right. counting? Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, but, um, so I actually volunteered for the Brea Theatre League and Lorena Kolb was a realtor who was on the board and she introduced me to the CEO of the North Orange County Association and that went through a merger, became the Greater North Association, then it became Pacific West Association. Mm -hmm. I was involved in all the merger talks. And at that time I had my daughter and um, they wouldn't let me work part-time, they wanted full-time. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, she's only gonna be this age for a short time, I want to make sure I can sure. have some time with her. So um, I quit my job and that's when I started Put It In Right In, my company. Mm -hmm. And right. I thought, well, if it doesn't work out, I can always go get a real job, right? A real job. <laughs> a real job. <laughs> hey, honey, I sold the house today. <laughs> Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Get a real job. So put it in writing. Uh, is, I've been doing it for 23 years. Wow. And um, then I got involved with the Orange County Realtors, which is where I met you, Mindy. And Dave brought me in actually to write policies and procedures for the, for the association. Oh, wow. And he says to me, hey, he said, would you sit down with Rita Tayanaka? She's our past president and she's had this idea for a leadership academy. And Rita and I literally sat down with a pencil and pad and figured out what we might do and develop the leadership academy. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things we realized that when you're in leadership, and you two are probably very good at this because you've made the connections and the introductions, but in order to get known to get those leadership positions, you've got to have a, a presence, a visibility. And um, every realtor has a free spot on realtor.com's website. That's true. Most people don't use it. Most people, it's a blank space. And so I said, well, let me do a class in the academy to help these future leaders know how to position themselves so that when they're looking for a leadership role, the, the committee chair will look up online and see who they are, and they want to find out who they are. So I did the bio class for the Leadership Academy, and um, after that, um, after the Academy ran for four years and they, they dropped it during COVID, of course, and I really felt kind of bereft. I thought, why am I feeling so down? And I think what it was, was I missed that connection with people, mm. you know, and a lot of the Academy alumni reached out to me and said, gosh, you, were, you gave me so much confidence, I would never have done this That's without true. you. Absolutely. You know, I, they saw me more as a coach and a mentor. And one of the Academy alumni um, opened, started a group called Real Estate Pros Without Borders. And they said, Deb, can you do the bio class for this group like you did for the Academy? And I said, sure. And we did an online class. And then they said, what else have you got? And I said, well, I've had this idea for ages to do these, these different series of webinars and trainings. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, why don't send something to us? So I wrote a quick email, didn't even think about it much. Well, I could do this, 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 and this. And they said, great, when can you start? Well, I hadn't written any of those, so I had some really long days, you know, writing all the curriculum. So that's when I developed the Right Stuff Lab for Real Estate Pros. Yes. Awesome. And basically, it's all those writing projects that most people stumble across, or they put it on the back burner, I'll do it later, I'll mm -hmm. do it later. And me, I love to write, so it was kind of a natural combined thing for me to do that. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I started the Right Stuff Lab during COVID, and um, I've done it for quite a few companies, I've done it to a global audience. I got my first international client this year from Portugal. Mm -hmm. And thankfully he grew up here and we didn't have a language issue because as I said, my language skills are not good, mm -hmm. uh, foreign language skills. But um, so really, you know, um, I really enjoyed what I've done with, with writing and helping people. And it's just been very rewarding for me to do that. And the real estate community has been a very much a, a very good community for me, as I said, I didn't know anyone when my daughter was born. There was all these real estate people in the room, in the delivery room, and um, they've always, you know, real estate people are good people. They really are. They they, they have your back. Yeah. They yeah. they we're they, helping people. You know. Yeah. Yes. And I also enjoyed uh, as I was involved in through the different associations, um, doing community relations. Uh, there's a lot of projects that I put into play. Um, we used to do the race for the cure in Newport Beach for all the Remax offices. And um, I'd get up at literally three o'clock in the morning, drive down to Newport Beach, 
set up the great big Remax blow up tent and we'd have all the t-shirts and all the stuff for all the Remax agents wow, that were participating. Yeah, it was it was cold and it was dark and it was wet down there at the ocean. Oh, wow. But you know, there was such a big sense of achievement. Um, another project I did, do any of your agents farm? Do they do farm in Germany? Yes, Africa? yes. We did a project which came out of actually Fresno from CAR meetings, Cattle Association Lotus meeting, called Christmas Country. And what it was is a project where you go into your farm or you can set yourself up outside a grocery store and you ask someone to donate a can of food for the working poor. Mm -hmm. And this project took off like crazy. Um, every weekend we had agents all over the five cities that we covered with Christmas trees, building Christmas trees of food outside the supermarkets because, you know, when you give someone a dollar bill for a charity, you're never sure quite how much of that dollar bill is going to make it to the intended, you know, goal for that charity. I'm just going to be siphoned off. When you give someone a can of soup, you know someone's going to get a whole can of soup, right? So Christmas Cantry, and then I, we developed a program where they could go farming, and they could go in their farms, and then we developed a, a healthy competition amongst all the offices in the area, which actually almost caused a fist fight at one point because I got this call because there was uh, two offered two companies, different companies, farming the same area. And one had put out bags on all the doors saying, you know, donate food for the Christmas Cantry program. And um, someone else came around and saw all the bags of food and thought, oh, who could put out food for me? And they picked up someone else's food. Oops. So I was getting these calls and people like, you know, so we had to kind of figure out how to handle that. But in one year, one, one spate of, I think it was like four weeks, we brought in 50 tons of food wow. in Fullerton through the Christmas Cantry. That's a lot of food. That was a lot of food. And um, that amount of food caused problems because we had nowhere to put it. Mm, and so Supply chain issues. There, definitely, <laughs> you know. And so um, I went to the city hall in Fullerton and I said, you know, I need somewhere to put this food. If you can't find somewhere, I'm taking it to another city. Right. We'll find somewhere, we'll find somewhere. <laughs> but you know, it was a great way for the agents to go out into the community, do some good community I PR. It. Gives a idea. good, um, you know, it's all about PR. I mean, you do it because you want to do it, but also it comes back to you exactly. in so many ways. Yeah. Yeah. And so I did That's the awesome. Christmas Cantry, um, had some really fun times with it. Um, I had a, a, we used to have Cantry balloons that they could blow up. And so if somebody gave you a can of food and they had a little kid, you'd give them a balloon, right? And I went out one Saturday to check on them and I see one of our readers, <coughs> he's got this five foot um, helium tank, right? She's rolling it across the parking lot on the floor, and I'm like, no, please don't do that, you know? So we had a few issues with it, but um, <laughs> it was fun for me because, you know, <clears throat> being involved in the community was something that I did when I first came here, and it's something that a lot of agents do. That's where they get their referral business exactly. from, yeah. you know? Because when you run out of family and friends, where do you go next? Yeah, you know? I totally believe in that. You know, I'm doing that, and actually just get out, get back from, you know, the charity uh, morning every Tuesday. I just did that like today this morning. Right. So every week we're doing that at the senior community over there in Gun Grove, you know, and meeting it, the senior. It makes you feel yeah. good and it, it awesome. comes back to you multiple, yeah, exactly. multiple times, yeah. you know. I actually was awarded by the City of Brea, um, uh, Our People Make a Difference Award for my volunteer work that I did with the city, you know, yes. which, you know, and I'm thinking, here's this little girl from England and who doesn't know anyone and she's getting recognized. It was just really uh, something I didn't expect. Um, so I've done a lot of volunteer work, not so much more recently, but, you know, to get out there and get known and, and to do that kind of thing is really kind of heartwarming. You know? That's awesome, yeah. Deb, yeah, the right stuff. <laughs> Thank you, are, you. You are definitely the right stuff. Uh, so besides volunteer, besides uh, writing, you have any other hobby? Like, you know, I love to garden. And I garden, love, yes. I love your seeing your post of all the flowers yes, that you I post. Well, we're in Garden Grove, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> But no, I love to garden. Um, yes. I don't have a big garden. I, I live in a town home, so I have a, a patio, I have a balcony. And well, I have we have somebody that can front. help you maybe get something get else, a bigger home. little bit of <laughs> land there. But no, I, I love to garden, um, mm. and I love, uh, I love to, I, I have a fountain which attracts the hummingbirds, and right. in my office, I sit in my office and I look out and I see the fountain, I see all the hummingbirds, and you know, it's a very calm and peaceful um, existence, you know, to be there in that office. So gardening, um, I love live theatre. I love going to live theatre. Mm -hmm. um, I actually won a walking part in a play one time. It was a fundraiser for the arts for the city of Brea. 
and uh, it had like a silent auction and I put down my name for a walk and part and I actually got it to my most wow. surprise. When that part in a plant, that's interesting. Yeah, and I, I, they turned it into a speaking role. And <laughs> Did you ask for the SAG after card? No, he didn't. <laughs> it was a one, one, one time deal. But I actually, um, it was called Prelude to a Kiss was the play. And the premise of the play was that this couple um, are getting married and this strange old man turns up and no one knows who he is and um, he wants a kiss from the bride and so they, they let him give the bride a kiss just to get rid of him and at that moment she changes places with him and he goes into her body and she goes into his. And so that was the premise of the play and I played the part of the minister who performed the wedding ceremony. So I performed the wedding ceremony nine times in three weeks. Wow. And I had this big white. Oh, so this was a recurring role. It wasn't just a little. Cameo. Oh, it was. It was a. Wow. It was a, a nice. run, and um, I, I had this big white cassock to wear, you know, as the minister, and my daughter, as daughters are, Mum, you look like a giant marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was my. I had always wanted to be on stage. I'd always been behind the stage doing publicity and PR, but I got a chance to be on stage, and it was so much fun. Nomination for a Tony Award, possibly? No, I don't Coming think so. so. As the Pantages? I just can't remember lines as much as I used to then. You know, it's, it's, as you get older, I think the memory has to work harder to remember things. But uh, Do you take this man to be your... <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so, it, so I said to my daughter, hey, if, if the efficient doesn't show up your wedding next month, I'll just get that robe out and <laughs> jump go. in, you know? Yeah, so. Wow, it's amazing to get to know you, and I can't stress what a lost art you know, writing is these days, especially with people, you know, doing shortcuts and little acronyms. You know, I mean, Brian Owens, you know, we have funny <laughs> acronyms Brian. like DTMC, didn't make the cut, or, you know, the, thanks for the invite, and we're making up all these things, but yeah, maybe we should write them out this time. Well, they're you talking, know? I just saw an article yesterday that because of all the texting that we do mm -hmm. now, that they might be abolishing the apostrophe because no one puts it in a text because it's so hard to add that in. But, you know, I think, I'm a very, obviously a big advocate for writing, I love it, that's what I do. But I also think that people don't pick up the phone and talk as much mm. as they should. Mm. Yeah. And especially with the millennials, uh, my daughter... Uh, calling uh, you guys out. Yeah, I'm calling out my daughter here. And, you know, and I said to her, I said, she was on the phone texting with her best friend, who's her maid of honor, and I'm like, pick up the phone. Because was she, she sitting at the same table too? Not quite. Okay, well, that happens here. a lot. That yeah. happens a lot too. But, you know, I said, for example, if you say you want it when, as an example, mm -hmm. in writing, it's you want it when. If you speak it, it could be you want it when, mm -hmm. like you're inquiring. Oh, yes. yeah. It, or yes. It, Different tones. Or yes. it could be you want it when, when you're angry, you know, you're, you're being ridiculous. Right. So you don't get those tones in writing. Oh, it's lost. Yeah. And even yeah. in Zoom meetings, I mean, and, and we're even talking about proper, you know, communication. Even, I mean, the, you know, the percentage that's lost when you're not in person is significant. And even Zoom meetings don't even solve that process. Zoom has is, is got its own issues because it's very hard to read body language when you're in the camera, mm -hmm. in front of a camera. Um, or you when know. your camera's off. <laughs> <laughs> or when your camera's off. You're not, yeah. you're not getting that context because no. you don't realize how much you, when you're having a conversation with someone, you're constantly reading their body language. How are they reacting to what I'm saying? And it's hard to do that on Zoom. And, and, yeah, and then sometimes you adjust what you're saying. You, know, you realize right. that you're going the wrong way there. So. There is a new term coming out. Is, is it inverse or immerse? Immerse? Immerse. Immersive. Well, are you talking about like the Van Gogh like a, visits like, no, and stuff? I mean, no, no, they... I mean like a like Facebook post. I, I, I recently read from uh, Mark that he's going to transform the Facebook, uh, instead of FaceTime regular room, that you can feel that you are in that room with that room with the people. smell a vision maybe? <laughs> in, in <laughs> wow. Yeah, something, something new is going to come out soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Bring it on. Every day, new technology. You know, I think this last year has really made technology um, you know, really come to the fore. I think we were almost there, and I think it's kind of pushed everyone into embracing it. Yeah, um, I, I think it really just made that trajectory kind of a little sharper and said, all right, let's, let's not wait, you know, do it now, just like everyone's buying stuff online. And it's amazing, once you kind of lose your resistance to it and you accept it and you start using it, I mean, who remembers Yellow Pages? Remember, if you wanted a phone number, you'd have this huge tome that was out of date the day it was printed, and you'd be rifling through, and now you don't think twice about it, do you? I, mean, I don't have to name my plumbing company A-A-A-A-A-Able, right. Aaron's 
plumbing, you know. Remember that? Right, I mean, right. that right there is like, because you had to be on the first one, so I you'd know. have or all your AAA, 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 one, 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 yeah. Yeah, and the millennials probably have no idea what we're talking yeah, about, but you realize <laughs> Yeah, we used to use white pages to cut to the chase, right? Mm. Same thing to, um, you know, uh, the navigator. You know, before we used Thomas Guide, right? Right. To right. find the location, the addresses, but now, no, put the navigation and phone and everything's so convenient. My uh, sister in England calls her GPS the liar because she swears he sent, it sends her the wrong way. Yeah, it goes the wrong <laughs> way. Right well, you know, I can't, like I said, again, stress uh, how important, you know, writing is, especially in the real estate business that we are in, uh, whether it's bios or descriptions of properties that are not, you know, you know so cliche. Um, yeah, I can't wait to attend one of your um, yeah, events and sessions, and I can think of a few, uh, you know, Asian Real Estate Association of America local chapters that could maybe have, <laughs> you know, Deb as a uh, guest an in person on an in person event. So, mm-hmm. looking yeah, forward to having. Yeah, I'm so excited ladies. again to have uh, you on board with that with our team because you know, out of all the classes that you created, at least proper English ESL <laughs> might be an added value to you know the team because English is our you know not not native language and um and our team always needs to be improved learning every day yeah. it's just giving yeah. them the confidence that yes. they can actually you know there's a, pro, a, a software called Grammarly an app called Grammarly so if you're really worried about that, you can use Grammarly and it will it'll correct your grammar for you. You know, there's so many things out there now that can make it far less daunting for someone who's not a native English speaker to actually write something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Deb Schreider, uh, thank you for an amazing, uh, I just, it's great to hear about, you know, yeah. the written word that we've kind of lost to social media and, and acronym, acronyms and abbreviations. So. Uh, it's amazing to uh, you know get this on the forefront and, and get the realtors right. to start writing correctly and properly <laughs> so that dot 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 yeah. you know lol anyway thanks again for having uh, uh, well, having us as your uh, hosts and uh, you here as our guests <laughs> and I went a little backwards there but um, you know bye bye boring bio yeah definitely uh, bye bye boring uh, bio yeah so. make sure you guys are read properly and if you don't know and you can't figure it out this person here can help you out thank you very much for thank the you. invitation to share put it in writing with you and do some talking with you at the same That's time right. it's been fun yeah thank, thank you. you thank you for your time yeah, well Mindy. that concludes Thanks another too. amazing episode of Mindy's Manic Monday it is not quite as manic now that we have Deb here <laughs> so thanks again for being on our show Uh, Next week, we're going to have even more amazing guests. Anyway, thank you again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.